And Bryony Gordon has struggled with mental health problems since she was 12. She's been taking antidepressants on and off since the age of 18. She's now in her 30s, so she can't imagine life without them. One of the most effective ways of dealing with her depression, though, has been to talk to people with similar problems. A year ago, she founded a group called Mental Health Mates. We'll hear from Bryony herself in a moment. First, though, we sent our reporter Anna Cookson along to Clapham Common in London to meet up with one of Bryony's groups, which was being led by a friend, Kat. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to our Clapham Mental Health Mates walk today. For, is, have I got any newbies today? Anyone? Lovely. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And welcome back to everyone who's actually been before. Uh, we will set off. We're just going to kind of hug the side of the common and then uh, cut in actually onto the common and heads towards the bandstand and the little cafeteria there where you can get a fine array of uh, coffees, teas and also gin, but maybe not gin today, Polly. Um, you don't have to come here and talk about how you feel, but if you're not having a good day, please do to help someone. And how did you get involved? I don't know. I remember going and being like, why am I here? Like, and it, it was honestly, it was great. It was just like, once you kind of got over the... It's like meeting new people at any point. We, again, we didn't chat about how we felt or anything. It was just a, how did you hear about this? And how's your week been? And if I'm totally honest, I find that what I've talked about the most is how mental health affects like, just life in general. So there was always a lot of chat with the girls about like dating and how like the frustrations of dating, but also how your mental health plays a part in that. Uh, things like work and like having a bad day at work when you have mental health issues is sometimes not really a bad day at work for someone else. So it's just being able to come and talk to someone who like kind of gets that because sometimes even your closest friends, it's hard to explain to them why it's a big issue and why it's made you feel a certain way, whereas you come here and everyone gets it and it's you don't feel stupid for seeing it as well so i think everyone would agree you still have your bad days it's like you've got a like a family to talk to dude how long have you been coming on these walks i've been coming pretty much since they started so just after the summer i think tell me about your own mental health and how it's helped uh, well i've been struggling with depression and anxiety for a good 10 years now and I made the decision that enough was enough and I wanted to just make things better for myself and easier for myself. And what difference do you think it's made to your own life? There's a great sense of solidarity and it really does make you feel that you're not the only one who goes through some of the crazy symptoms that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. What kind of things do you talk about? Um, what's going on in our lives at the moment? Um, we do sometimes people are having a tougher time than others so we offer as much support and help as we can if you're having a bad day it's so easy to just sit at home and not do anything so to get out there and talk and feel like you're not alone is just it's just so important Mark tell me about your own mental health what made you come along and, and how is this helping um, doing walks is good for mental health and fresh air and also sort of socializing meeting people because you can be quite isolating when you've got mental health problems and you do lose sort of contact with friends and family, even though you do see them sometimes, but you don't see them as regularly as you used to. How does this compare to other things that are available in the wider world to help mental health? It's definitely a lot more supportive than some institutions, and um, it's good to be a variety of people and to talk to them, even if, even if you can support them as well, because sometimes it's not just about you, but also it's quite rewarding to support other people with health, with health needs as well. There you go. It's a group from Mental Health Mates, an organisation uh, that was founded by Bryony Gordon, who joins us now. Uh, Bryony, good morning. Good morning. So this is a bit like self-medication, isn't it, really? Your very own talking therapy. Yeah, well, it's peer support, really. I mean, I was I was out on the common um, trying to run last year when I was really, really ill. I get really bad obsessive compulsive disorder. Well, all about all obsessive compulsive disorder is bad. But um, and I sort of looked at people out and about doing military fitness together and playing football, and I thought, why is there not something for 
or um, for people with mental health issues. I mean, what I've learned, um, I write, I'm a journalist, I write a lot about mental health is that and from the feedback I get from readers is that it's really, 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 really normal to feel weird. And yet we're all made to kind of feel isolated, as Mark said then in that um that item and I just thought hang on I had like a bit, a bit of a brain wave and I thought why don't we just do a walk together um and get together and you know so where people can sort of see how normal it is to have mental health issues when did you first realize you didn't feel as it were normal um I was I was 12 and I became convinced I was dying of AIDS um I didn't know that that was obsessive compulsive disorder um and then it went on throughout my life so when I was 17 I thought I was I'd killed someone and blanked it from my mind these are all things of OCD very common forms of OCD that no one talks about yeah we think it's we think it's the rearranging coke cans and all of that um and then but because I didn't have any proper diagnosis for it or know what it was it sort of spiraled and I became a bit like a magnet picking up metal shavings so I ended up with an eating disorder and with the drug habit and you know it was it it's amazing to me I mean listening to your show today which is great I think it's just that we're talking about this and what I've taken from this is that we just need to shout and shout and scream about mental health because the one thing I've learned from mental health mates which is all over the country now and we've even got one in San Francisco today which is so exciting um is is that mental illness lies to you it tells you you're a freak it tells you you're alone it tells you no one else understands what you're going through and that's just not true and um antidepressants are a great help for me but I really think listening to what everyone said we we need to have more of this more kind of peer support more of a holistic view on how to approach depression yeah, uh, Dr. Zoe Norris, a uh, final thought for you. I've had a, a really troubling and touching text in from Louise in Manchester. Says, I've been on antidepressants for 12 months after being diagnosed with postnatal depression a year after the birth of my son. Other mothers I know have also been handed out these tablets and it's more commonplace than I first imagined. It's almost shameful to be on them. I access repeat prescriptions easily and without question. I feel like I'm a slave to the tablet. So, you know, we've got Bryony there with a, a little bit of self-help, but we have people like Louise in Manchester, I suppose, repeating the story that we've heard consistently throughout this morning's programme. And it's so sad to hear that. I, you know, it's it's so sad. And really, when we start these medications, we should be saying to people what the timeline is in terms of them feeling better and what the timeline is in terms of discussing coming off them. And sometimes patients find that frightening because sometimes they get to the six-month mark and think, actually, I'm not ready to come off them. But that's OK. But they need to feel empowered and involved in that decision rather than that they're just stuck carrying on with them with no control. Uh, Brian, when you took antidepressants, did you feel you were in control? Um, I tell you what, what I would say is that I hear so often the language is hatched as shame and they feel people feel like a failure for taking antidepressants. And my experience is that if you've gone to a doctor, if you plucked up the courage to get out of the house and tell them that something's wrong, you're not a failure, you're a hero. And, you know, you should feel like that. This isn't, you know, we need to be talking more about um, about how to treat this illness. But I really wish people would not feel sh ashamed for taking them. You're doing something for your health and I think you should be really proud of yourself. Bryony Gordon appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much as well to uh, uh, Dr Zoe Norris. It's been fantastic having you on, Zoe. Thank you. If you do suffer from mental health problems, by the way, and want to know what help is available, you can find a list of organisations that can provide help and support by visiting bbc.co.uk slash action line, where you'll find a section devoted to mental health. Across the